In this video, we're going to be continuing on from what we did in, last, in the last video, and we are going to be comparing the conditions under which called OLS, first differences, fixed effects, and random effects estimators are respectively blue. And we're also going to talk about the conditions under which we can do inference in each of these different models. So in this video, we're going to assume that all of the conditions which each model requires for them to be either consistent and unbiased, or in the case of random effects, just consistent, we're going to assume that each of those different conditions is upheld. So we're just going to continue on from where we left off in the last video. So the seventh assumption which we require is that the variance of the first difference of the error, the idiosyncratic error that is, uit, given our vector of our independent variables at any time period s, including the time period where s equals t, this has to be equal to some sort of constant. So that's just really our heteroscedasticity assumption. So what particular model is this going to be important for? Well, if you haven't guessed it already, it's going to turn out to be only important for first differences because it's only in first differences whereby we actually come across terms like this first difference in the idiosyncratic error. So it is a requirement for a first differences estimator to be blue. The next assumption which we require is that the covariance of the first difference of the idiosyncratic error with the first difference of the idiosyncratic error in some other time period s, including the time period where s equals t, given our vector of our independent variables at any time period, actually we don't even need s here, we need another variable, so, so I'm actually going to call this r here, because we don't want this s to be the same as the s on this second term here. Well, the covariance of these errors in the first difference model has to be equal to zero. And this is a requirement for the first differences estimator to be blue. The ninth assumption which we're going to talk about here is that the variance of UIT, the idiosyncratic error, given our vector of independent variables for that individual i at some other time period s, and our unobserved heterogeneity term, this variance has to be a constant, and I'm going to call that sigma mu squared. And this is a requirement for the for, uh, fixed effects estimator to be blue. Finally, in our discussion of whether estimators are blue, we require that the covariance of uit with uis, given now our vector of our independent variables, actually again we need an r here, and also given our unobserved heterogeneity, this covariance has to be equal to zero. And this is the final requirement for fixed effects estimators to be blue. So if the first two of these assumptions are satisfied, then first differences is a blue estimator, whereas the latter two, if these two are satisfied, then fixed effects estimators are themselves blue. Note that it is not possible for random effects to be blue because of the fact that we need to estimate the parameter lambda and practically OLS or pooled OLS is really not frequently going to be blue when we're talking about panel models. So now we're going to talk about the conditions under which we can do inference. And the condition which we're first going to talk about is that the idiosyncratic error UIT, given our vector of our independent variables, at some other time period s for that individual i, as well as our unobserved heterogeneity term alpha i, then we're going to require that the distribution of these uit is normal with a mean of zero and a variance of sigma mu squared. And if this condition is satisfied, then OLS first differences and a fixed effects estimators um, all have exact T and F distributions for the relevant constructed statistics. So we can actually do exact inference 
in each of these three conditions. If this condition isn't true, then if we have a large enough sample, we can also do sort of approximate inference in each of these three circumstances, or each of these three models rather. The final assumption which we require for random effects to be able to do inference there is that the variance of alpha i, given our vector of explanatory variables, x i s, has to be equal to sigma alpha squared. So we're just requiring that this alpha i term here is conditionally homoscedastic. And if this is satisfied, then we can't do exact inference for random effects, but we can do approximate inference for random effects. And so approximately, if n is large enough, then the relative uh, t statistics and f statistics which are constructed will have approximately t and f distributions. And this is only the case if n tends to infinity where, when t is fixed. So notice that random effects, it's in principle not possible to do uh, exact inference on that particular type of model. And that's due to the fact that we have to estimate lambda. If we didn't have to estimate lambda, then in theory we could do exact inference. But for all intensive purposes, we can only do approximate inference. But in all cases, assuming we have a large enough sample, we can really go ahead and we can do inference anyway, because then central limit theorems start to apply.